Hey everyone! All right, so we are back in the kitchen and today we are going to be doing a new Disney recipe. For this one, we are going to Disneyland, more specifically, the Grand Californian Hotel. For Steve and I, this is one of our favorite spots because this is actually where we got married. And for this recipe, we're going to Napa Rose. Now this is the signature fine dining restaurant for the Grand Californian and it has a special place in our hearts because this is actually where Steve and I had our rehearsal dinner. As you've already seen in the title, we are doing the Blackberry Zinfandel Braised Short Ribs. This recipe comes from the Chef Mickey cookbook, Treasures from the Vault and Delicious New Favorites by Pam Brandon and the Disney Chefs. Now I have made this recipe quite a few times. It is so delicious. I'm really excited to do a video and share it with all of you. And I was thinking this is a really great way to kick off the autumn season. Now this recipe is a little bit time intensive. It is braising after all. These short ribs are gonna braise for about three hours, but we've got some more stuff to do even before that. But what's great is that you can actually make this anywhere from like a day or two ahead of time and just reheat them in case you wanna have friends over, you're gonna have a party, you're gonna be good to go. So let's go ahead and get out our short ribs. Now this is 12 bone-in short ribs, about six to eight ounces each. I'm gonna take my short ribs and move them over to a sheet pan where I'm gonna generously season them with salt and pepper. And then we're gonna go ahead and refrigerate these for one hour. While the short ribs are in the fridge, we can go ahead and prepare all of our other ingredients. We want one large onion diced, two large carrots coarsely sliced, and one fennel bulb sliced. And I'll be honest, I don't remember how to properly cut up a fennel bulb, so I'm gonna go Google it real quick. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut this down just a little bit more. We wanna get rid of those fronds and the stock. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut this right in half. And we're gonna remove the stem. These veggies are gonna flavor our braising liquid and I'm actually just gonna do a coarse chop on these things. They don't have to be perfect because after we're done braising our short ribs, these are actually gonna be strained out at the end anyway. So one little thing I'm actually gonna change from the recipe as it's written is that I'm gonna be using a Dutch oven for this. The recipe as it's written has you sear your short ribs and saute your veggies in a saute pan and then after that you move it into a stock pot. I don't wanna lose all those brown bits where all that flavor is in my pan, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my Dutch oven. This is an enameled cast iron pan, and I can do everything in it, and that way I can really capture all of those flavors, and that's really gonna come through in my finished short ribs. After an hour, we can go ahead and take out our short ribs. We're gonna go ahead and put our Dutch oven on the burner, and we're gonna set this at medium high heat, and we're gonna go ahead and add a quarter of a cup of olive oil. With my olive oil ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and start browning my short ribs on all sides. The recipe doesn't tell us how long to sear these for on each side. I'm gonna do about like two or three minutes. And also, as you can see, I'm doing this in batches because I don't wanna overcrowd my Dutch oven. Oh, these are great. I'm really loving the sear I'm getting on these short ribs. Again, this was about two to three minutes per side and you wanna make sure you get all your sides. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these from my Dutch oven and put them off to the side in a bowl and I'm gonna start the second round of short ribs. In case you're wondering, I did go ahead and lightly season just a little bit more of the short ribs before I put them into the oil just to help season that crust. These short ribs look awesome, so I'm gonna go ahead and put them off the side in our bowl. I'm gonna go ahead and add my veggies to our Dutch oven, and I'm gonna drop the temperature down to medium. Just go ahead and stir these around. Um, you, don't want, you don't need to cook them for too long, just until they're nice and browned. As you can see, I am going ahead and scraping up the brown bits at the bottom. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that's where all your flavor is gonna come from, so you really wanna incorporate that. Just a little kitchen tip for you. I always use, when I'm using my Le Creuset Dutch oven like this, because it's an enameled cast iron, I always use a wooden spoon because I don't have to worry about scratching the surface, but I can still go ahead and really work up those brown bits. Now we're gonna go ahead and add our wine. This recipe calls for one bottle of red Zinfandel. I am using this Sonoma County Storyteller. I know some people like to cook with like cheap wine. I'm a student of Thomas Keller. I always like to cook with what I would want to drink. And now we're gonna go ahead and just add the whole bottle to our vegetables. 
with our wine incorporated. We're gonna go ahead and keep this on medium and we're gonna bring this to a simmer and we're gonna reduce that wine to its about 75%. The next ingredient is four cups of veal demi-glace, which can be a little tricky to find. I found this at a gourmet grocery store, and you might be able to find it at something like a Whole Foods, uh, but it kind of looks like this. And basically the instructions will tell you right on the package, but it's four parts of water to one part of demi-glace. So because we need four cups, I'm gonna use one cup of this and four cups of hot water. The hot water will dissolve the demi-glace and you'll be left with this really rich, almost like a stock, and we're gonna add that to our pan. One thing to note is that it looks like this is actually gonna make about five cups, obviously, because we started with four cups of hot water to one cup of the demi-glace. So we're gonna have a little bit left over, but we can keep this and use it for something else. It smells awesome. And just so I have the recipe just right, I'm actually gonna go ahead and pour out exactly four cups. Once we've reduced our red wine, we're gonna go ahead and add our veal demi-glace. Again, this is four cups of veal demi-glace, and to this, we're gonna add two cups of chicken stock, 14 ounces of frozen blackberries that have been thawed, four fresh thyme sprigs, and five fresh sage leaves. And now we'll go ahead and add our short ribs. Now this can be a little bit tricky because you wanna make sure you get all of them in there, but you wanna make sure that they're all completely submerged in the liquid. The liquid will rise, of course, as you add the short ribs, so don't worry if when you start adding those first few in, it doesn't look like it's gonna cover. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the heat slightly to medium high. We're gonna go ahead and bring this to a boil, and once we have that boil, we're gonna reduce the heat to a simmer, and the cookbook doesn't make a mention of this, but I'm gonna go ahead and cover this, and then we're gonna continue to simmer for three hours, or until the short ribs are tender. After three hours, this is where we get to find out if all of our hard work has paid off. I am going to bring my Dutch oven over here, and I'm also going to get a serving dish ready to go. Um, this point, we are just removing the short rib from their bones. As you can see, our short rib is so tender. The bones have actually already fallen off. We don't even have to remove them. We'll just go ahead and place them into our dish. With our ribs in our serving dish, we can go ahead and cover this with some aluminum foil. With our short ribs off to the side, we're gonna go ahead and strain our braising liquid into a saucepan, and we're gonna reduce that down until we get a really rich, syrupy consistency. Back to the stove, we're gonna go ahead and put our strained braising liquid over a medium flame, and we're going to simmer this for about 20 minutes. We are about ready to plate. Now, while this was all going on off screen, I did go ahead and make myself some mashed potatoes to kind of bed this on. Mashed potatoes would be great, a potato puree, maybe even some polenta. The choice is yours. I went with the mashed potatoes because that's my favorite. So I've got my bowl of mashed potatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and take one of our short ribs. there. And then I'm going to go ahead and take just a little bit of our sauce. I'm going to start with just a little bit. Spoon that over. And because this is blackberry Zinfandel braised, we'll just add a few little blackberries there. And there you have Napa Rose's blackberry Zinfandel braised short ribs. Okay, I cannot wait to dig into this, so let's see what we've got here. Okay, as you can see, it's very, very fork tender. Mm. Right off the bat, a burst of flavor. There is something so comforting about a well-made short rib. It's just the ultimate comfort food, especially with these mashed potatoes we've got going on here. Like I said, you can do whatever you would like. Even a nice vegetable would be good with this. Maybe some sauteed green beans or a glazed carrot. That would be really great. Um, but I mean, just on its own, this short rib is amazing. Now, of course, I haven't been slaving away in the kitchen all day just for me. I would like to pass this off and see what Steve thinks about this. Looking forward to this. It smells so good in this house all day long, so I bet it's gonna taste great. This is absolutely like fork tender, delicious, a flavor bomb the second you put it in your mouth. It is so good. 
Um, you know, it's basically like, uh, in my opinion, it's like taking pot roast, but making it so much more tender, injecting a lot more flavor in it. This is, <laughs> it's a great family meal for sure. And there you have it. This is delicious. If the video didn't make it clear, this is actually a very simple recipe. It's just time consuming. And as I mentioned, you can make this in advance. You can make it for your parties, for friends coming over, and you're gonna have an amazing spread. I will say this though, a little cook's note, I think I would go a little bit longer with the reducing of the sauce. As I mentioned, it was 20 minutes. I probably would have done maybe another 10 or 15 just to really thicken it up. But other than that, it was phenomenal. A little cook notes for those of you who did make this in advance and now need to reheat. All you have to do is reheat your reduced braising liquid and add the short ribs into it and you'll heat everything up all together. Perhaps at the end, just add a tablespoon of butter to add a little bit of velvetiness to it and you are good to go. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you go ahead and make this, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you thought, how your experience went. Give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And from our magic family to yours, enjoy.